What is up world? Today I'm going to be talking to you about the Doug Wheeler exhibition at David's Werner Gallery. This Doug Wheeler exhibition was my first encounter with his work. He has been around for a very long time. One of the first people to work with light in the way that he did. So it stems back to the 1960s and his work around light filling space. He started in 1967 experimenting with this idea of luminosity in a space to fill with color and light. In 1969, he first did this exhibition that I'm showing you here in Amsterdam. Doug Wheeler had been a painter, but then thought, how can I use light to fill space with color? Groundbreaking idea at the time. Today, a lot of people have done it. Dan Flavin being one of the most seminal figures in that, right? But Doug Wheeler in 1969 did one of the first exhibitions that featured just light to create a space and time experience. Uh, the light itself produces this kind of spatial experience, but also a sound experience. This idea of creating a confined area where the viewer could walk into the space. He enclosed the space using this white fabric material originally. Not the one you see here, but the one back in 1969. It was kind of a mesh, a sort of translucent nylon. <laughs> The ground is really slick, some kind of slick like enamel finish. And hear your footsteps. Even in that space, I could hear as it was rounded, a, a, a kind of shell around the gallery. There was a girl who was walking along to get her Instagram pics and her friend was taking the picture and she had it on her heels. And she just, and she wasn't a heavy stomper. She was just walking normal, what I would consider normal. And her heels just made this clap, clomp, clomp, bang, bang. Sound and her friend said, "Girl, me a chill it, all right? Like you, you're so loud in here." And she's like, "I'm trying. Like I'm not even doing anything. She's not doing anything. The space itself." has these confined walls where reverberations bounce off of them. So you, you're getting the luminosity of space, but you're also getting this echo sound in the space, which is pretty far out there, ominous and almost kind of ethereal, a little spatial, and thinking about the greater galactic sound of reverberation and echoes. The light becomes like an object, right? It, it has almost weight to it. It kind of calls you forth, right? Kind of this go into the light kind of feel, but not like morbid, you know what I'm saying? More like, hey, come and let me embrace you. This sort of thing. It's very inviting. I felt very much uh, like a belonging in the space and there's an expansiveness to it. It's almost like it's never ending. You can see the wall, you can see the light around it, but it, it invites you to almost step through it like a portal. It's for the time, think about 1967 and 1969, where we're used to paintings and sculptures. And, and abstract expressionism just happened, right? Remember 1967, Abex was it. All we're doing is just throwing paint at surfaces and watching what happens. This was one of the first things that said, I'm, I'm not even using paint. It's just these light bulbs and this space. Is that good enough for art? People were like losing their minds at the concept of this. Today, it might be just an everyday contemporary art piece, which we Instagram and post for people to see. But at the time, you got to think this spatial, experiential, luminous space was cutting edge. And then you can see there's a, there's just like a frame around the wall with a neon light kind of behind it, but it gives off this glow, this glow the entire length of the wall, which is really, really hot. So the light itself is just positioned in these long fluorescent tubes behind these wooden frames that are made along the edge. So they just kind of created this little lip and then behind the lip is where the light is. It's a simple engineering uh, feat. So, but it produces something that looks so out of this world. So Doug Wheeler for the better part of his career has done experiential, perceptive, uh, spatial works. That is what he is known for and has been kicking ass ever since. I love this work. It was the first time I got to see a Doug Wheeler and uh, yeah, I, I love to see more of these. So I thought it was a great compliment to the work featured by Noah Davis in the other section of the gallery, which you can find a video about that posted 
also with this one. Um, so I'll link that up right here. Uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more videos of art galleries and artists, uh, I'd love to keep taking you on these gallery tours with me. So like, subscribe to get more gallery tours, and I hope to keep doing these for you. Until the next time, be easy and stay creative.